Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I wanted to do a follow-up to the flip-through I did the other day with the squash book. Um, <laughs> I said something really silly, and I thought maybe I ought to correct that by doing a video and fixing it. So remember when I said I put this on it so right side up? So when I put it in the shelf, it goes like this, so I'll know right side up. Oh, pfft, you can't tell by putting it. All you know is it just this is this way, but you don't know when you open it if it's really right side up or upside down. That was really dumb. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, wait, I wasn't. All right, so let me look again. This is right side. Uh, this is right side up. See, you can't tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a belly band so that I know which is right side up, which is this side here. And that'll help me know. So when I put it in there and I go to unfurl it, I will know. I probably should have glued this up and down instead of the way I did it. All right, so let's close that up for a second. And I did want to show you some of the belly bands that I made in the past for books that are, you know, a um, little unusual. Except for this one. This one's an, just a basic accordion book. I did for a friend who likes cats and it slides on and off with ease and what I did was I found the picture of a little kitty glued it on some leftover cardstock I had in my drawer with all my white paper and white leftover cardstock and glued it on there and then picked this funky green I don't know what I was thinking and another mistake that I think I I made is that when I glued the cat on I probably should have put the seam in the center and then glued the cat over the the seam so you would not see the seam this was made a year and a half two years ago so it, it's it's been a while since I made this I've learned things since I've done this all right so let me show you some prototype books this is a flag book I'm not doing the flip through on this. I'm just showing you something about the flag book and why the belly band, which way you put it on for certain books is important. All right, so a flag book is thicker here than here. So when you do the belly band and you slip it on and off, you want to be sure that you look to see, sorry, which end you are... Um, you're opening, you're, you're going to slip it back over because if it's meant for a smaller end, it's tough to push it this way and it's even harder to put it back on. I know I tried before I started filming. So it's easier to put it on this way. See, it just slips on. And the this book will open up if I don't put the belly band on it. So that's on there. Now, what I did was is I painted this scene which is sand and the sky for a beach I painted it this way so I would remember what's on the inside it's a beach theme prototype flag book All right this one I did a little different this one's based on um, the card mat the box ma matchbox that's what it is matchbox so I did this one to where the belly band covers up basically the whole book and I painted it on the front, used leftover paper. As you can see, this right here is some other writing because I used it for something else on both sides. And I only painted the top and the back, the front and the back. Anyway, so it slides on the book. This one is the same width on both sides, so it really doesn't matter. So I just slide that in there, and it, it looks like kind of one whole piece. So that one's a nice one. I like that one. Did this one kind of the same way I painted the same theme color thing and it doesn't matter because well yeah it does this is the thick end this is the thin end but this is a more substantial belly band and yes it is recycled can I only show this to you there you go it's got writing inside there so I just slip it on slide it in and it's contained all right, so that's what I'm going to do for my little key book. I reached into my little holder that has leftover cardstock and, and paper and stuff, and I um, got me a piece for the belly band itself and got a piece for what I'm going to stamp, which is the lock. 
whoops, sorry, the lock. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper. I'm going to ink up my humongous stamp, which is total overkill. And I'm just going to do, I think I'll do the top section. This is, what's this called? Rich Cocoa Momento Luxe. I'm going to stamp, I know it's a lot of white, sorry guys, just stamp this on there because I kind of want it to look like the print on the, like the key paper. So I'm just going to keep stamping. I don't really care what it looks like. It's not an issue for me. I mean, you could line it up. I don't really care. All right, so that's done. It's a little damp still, but it'll be fine. All right, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to set, see, does it really matter if it's fabulous or not? Don't really care. It's a belly band. Mm. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. Then I'm going to take this little, see, little cardstock piece. And I'm going to take the brown, um, no, wait, I'm not <laughs> going to take this. Have you guys seen this? This is anti-static. Um, embossing powder helper thing. <laughs> they make little bags. You can use a bag and pat it on the paper or they have this cute little holder here. I had the, had the cute little holder. Take the lid off and it's got a brush on it right there. It's real subtle. Let's see the powder coming off of it. It's filled with cornstarch and I think baby powder because it smells so girly and so babyish. Oh my goodness, it smells, it reminds me of a baby, you know, of how good babies smell when they have that bath and powder. Brings back a lot of memories. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this paper under here and you kind of brush. It doesn't come out. You don't see the powder itself. You just brush it on here. And then I'm going to get my... Stamp pad, whoops, stamp pad ready. Put this with brown. Whoops, make sure that's all gooped up. Then I'm going to stamp that. <gasps> okay. It's all right. Then I'm going to pour clear gloss on here, embossing powder, and don't ask me what brand it is because honest to goodness I could not tell you. I've had this stuff for about five or six years and all I do on my lids when I do this, I put what color it is and that's all I do. I am not a brand person unless I have to be in this. Eh, I don't know. This might be wow. I don't know. So I'm going to tap it off. Take my paper, put it back in there. And the reason you do that is because when you blow dry these things or you heat gun them, you are going to have melted goo all over your mat that's bumpy. And when you try to do some art that you need to be smooth, nothing is more annoying than to feel the embossing stuff and then see it on your surface or something that never intended to have texture to it. All right, let me go and dry this real, I mean, emboss this real quick, and then I'll show you the results. Okay. Where's the camera? There it is, all embossed. Now I'm going to cut that bad boy out. If you need a little more stability than just one layer of cardstock, just find a piece of cardstock, cut it in half, double it up, and it will be fine. I'm the only reason I'm doing this because it looks nice and when I go to get something off a shelf I don't really have to go now these all look the same which one is this and I have to take them all out and you know putsy around with them all right so there's my there's my lock there's my belly band sorry there we go. 
There it is. Let me open it up to be sure I have it the right direction. Yes, it's going the right direction. So the band will go across here. So I'm going to take this. I don't even crease it. I just put it around there and pray. <laughs> the majority of my craft projects are a lot of praying. Please let this turn out. Just cut it off. Uh, take some Fabri-Tac because I'm in a hurry. Otherwise, I probably would use something else. This stuff does not smell fantastic. Take my Fabri-Tac. I might need a, just a pinch more here on the ends. Just hold it for a second. Done. Is it squeezing on the edge? No. Surprisingly enough, it is not. I always get a little overzealous. All right, so in the middle part, I'm just going to put the glue right here in the middle section. Put on the belly band. Blow. <laughs> and blow. And blow. <laughs> yep. Okay. So now... I know which is up when I open it and which is down. Let me put this over the end here. There we go. Belly band. It's pretty simple. If you, I, I like little things like this on my books. I'm a person who likes closure on my books. I'm not one of these who likes, what does everybody call it? Alligator mouth books where the book is like this thick and then it's like this by the time you get done. I like for it to be more compact, more uniform. And I like some kind of a closure on it. If it's going to develop a little bit of alligator mouth, I would like to kind of keep it contained. Like I said, it goes on a shelf where I don't have a lot of room for expansion. And I want it to um, stay contained. So there's my belly band. I corrected my mistake. Hopefully this will do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey everyone, I just wanted to pop back in at the tail end of the video and... Um, add the fact that I talked about the belly bands and I thought, well, why would I put all this stuff away and not continue on with what I said I would do? This is an opportunity to film it and to finish something that I wanted to do a while ago and just was too lazy. Oh, wait, too busy to finish it. So you already saw the key book. Wait, let me go in again. Sorry. Where's the, there we go. I can never remember where the silly up thing is. All right, so there's the key book. I mean, the squash book. Okay, so I had the others out. And here's the belly band that I did for the sunflower book. See, this has got sunflowers. And then I made a belly band with a sunflower stamp. It was a... Did I put the stamp away? <gasps> Son of a gun, I cleaned two things off the desk. Okay, so um, it was a really big sunflower stamp. And what I did was, in order to get just one sunflower that fit on the front of this little book, I cut the, fussy cut the, sun, the one sunflower out of it and then glued it on a yellow belly band that I painted with uh, Tim Holtz mustard seed distress something. I don't know. No, maybe it's not distress. Anyway, it was mustard seed. And I went ahead and painted the little um, sunflower and then did the inside brown and the little ladybug, which you cannot see. There you go. How about that way? Oops, wrong way. There you go. So then something else I did that's going to be totally too small is I wrote the word sunflower across here on the little fold and it was, str I was struggling. It was so tiny. And I have rather large handwriting, so believe me, that was a task. Okay, so there's that one. Um, here is a book that I did for a, uh, I put, had a bunch of Zentangle things that I did years ago, and I decided that they need to be compiled into a book, so I put them in a book with painty papers, because it was all um, black and white stuff, so I decided to put it in the painty paper, and the front cover one is a smaller version of what I did for here. So this one's pretty large. Just got a strip of white cardstock, 
put ink a little bit on the things that goes with the red on the front, drew the main character from the front, and pasted it on. This time I did my own advice. I glued it over the seam. Yay! <laughs> Again, wrote. Are you okay? Can you see it? I wrote the words in Tangle Square on there. Okay, there's that one. And let's see what show one. Oh, I did this one, which is my funky flower book. Wow, light's bad on that one. Sorry. My funky flower book. And uh, I found a stamp. Now, this, this funky flower book, the stamp underneath it is not the same as the one on the front. I did look for it, but I can't find this one. I, I don't think I drew this because it looks too symmetrical. I do not draw that well. Um, so... I just found another one, did turquoise paint, you know, uh, apple barrel turquoise something, and then stamped it on cardstock. And what I did do, because this is kind of a heavy duty thing, I doubled the cardstock and um, stamped it and then filled it in with a little Posca pen with the pink dots and then the turquoise around the edge. That's all I did for that one. Then I wrote flower book on it. Okay. I wouldn't ordinarily show this, but I'm going to do it. See, this was my first attempt. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that's shameful. <laughs> so I flipped it over and made it look grown up. <laughs> See, isn't that funny? People film stuff and they make it look so perfect and they don't tell you that <laughs> they start out looking like that. <laughs> I've outed people. No, the guy didn't name any names. That's a good thing, right? All right, and this one is my Meander book that um, I made because I was so mad at trying to figure out what is upside and down, upside, right side up, upside down, all that. And I am not, uh, I put this up on our experiments a while ago. I don't think I unfolded the whole thing. I can't remember. Anyway, so this is the front. It's the same flower. I love making these flowers. They're so stupid simple. I love doing these. And so I... Took a piece of cardstock I had, drew one out, took the belly band, did the black on it, and yes, I glued over my seam in the front. Uh, twice in a row, did it right. And then I, I decided that I didn't want just all black and white. The inside is strictly black and white. There's no color whatsoever. So I thought that the cover needed just a little teeny weeny weeny piece of color. And so I, I um, drew this on... Where did I draw it on? I drew it on a little piece of cardstock and then cut it out. I don't have where I did the lines. I just painted over it. Oh, let me see. My desk really is very messy right now. I've got like four projects sitting here. Um, anyway, I guess I can't find it. I. This is how I did it. You know, everybody thinks these are so perfect in there. No. Let me show you what they do. There's a pen. All right. You take this. You draw the circle. Then you go like this. After you colored in, and then you color around the you cut around this, and it makes this look like it was so perfect when truly it looked like this. <laughs> Alright. So those are the belly bands that I made. Um, since the last time I, since I filmed, I thought I would go ahead and stick them up here. So there's something that's finished and that I'm kind, I like all of them. You know, they're, they're not, let me go all the way out. There's these two, this one, this one, there they all are. I thought it's like, um, you know, you, you call them belly bands with kind of, I think it's kind of a derogatory term, but um, I think of it as um, book jewelry. It's not beads, it's not dangly, it's not noisy, it's not shiny, it's not fuzzy, but it complements what's on the inside. And I just thought it was kind of a cutesy way to keep my books um, together. And there's the one that it started out with, which is relatively plain. All right, that's it until next time. Bye.